So I put this little trailer together as a way to get down back roads, uh, Jeep trails, a uh, little bit of single track. The reason I made it this narrow was so that I could get on the narrower trails and not be snagging on bushes and trees and that kind of thing. So it is very narrow, but it seems, at least at this point, we're going to go try it now. But right as of right now, coming down the road, it seems very stable. So that's a good thing. I'm pulling it today with the Cyrusher Ranger. A great trail bike here. It is an e-bike. If you subscribe to my channel, you can see all about this bike and see lots of uh, ride video. So that's it. If you're interested in this, watch this video. I'll show you the basic build of this. And uh, right now, we're going to go out and try it on some trails. See how it does. Hey everyone. Hey, I was at the city dump here earlier this week and this had been thrown out. I grabbed it and put it in the back of my truck when I was done unloading and brought it back home. I've been thinking about picking up one of these tag along kind of uh, kid haulers here to convert into a pull behind a cargo trailer, kind of a little camping trailer for my uh, e-bike. And I saw this one there. What I liked about this one over what I was thinking of using, a lot of these are like a small bike frame with the puller. But this one's actually got a real low center of gravity here with this low main tube. And this whole system here clamps and moves up and down this. So I can sort of adjust the load depending on how much weight's there. What my general thinking is, I'm going to get rid of the top part of this stuff, keep this platform with the adjusters, and build off of that. I will also get rid of the cranks, the chain, all of that. So this is a, a really good start for free. Then had a thought that rather than having a single rear wheel here, which may be a little tippy, uh, depending on how it's loaded, um, that I would pick up a pair of 20-inch uh, wheels, put them uh, 12 inches apart or so, so that it, I've got a little bit more of a stable platform. So what I did was uh, look on Craigslist, um, saw this little pull-behind kids trailer for sale, 20-inch uh, wheels. What's nice about these is they've got sealed bearings and they've got these axles out of one side here so these axles mount into these brackets here on this trailer so I'll be using these brackets on my build so this is going to be an interesting build I'll see what I can come up with I ended up paying $15 for this for these wheels and what's left of this little trailer here which was perfect and of course I paid nothing for this so so far all the parts here to get started I've got a, a total of $15 in two and we'll see what I can put together Okay, here we are stripped down to the bare frame and it looks like a pretty good start to what I want to build. Okay, so these are all the pieces that I'm going to save for now off of the tag along here. And this is the little kid trailer here that I'm going to strip down now, take off what I need. I've already got cleaned up the wheels for it. I re-greased the bearings. I've had air in the tires for 
a few days now with no pressure drop so everything should be good there i'll decide later on if i want to put knobby tires on or just run these they're pretty much like new so not much of an issue but i got time to strip this thing down so my thinking is i'll attach my axle mounts off at each one of the stays here and have a wheel on either side rather than the one wheel in the center just for stability so i'm going to use these wheels that i showed you before and my thinking is that i'm going to angle them in a little bit like you see with the athletic wheelchairs it just makes them a lot less prone to tipping so if you angle the wheel a little bit so probably about 15 degrees in on either and that'll still keep things nice and narrow for trail riding so i noticed with these wheels as well that the original axle i, I like this design you've got a push button over here that actually releases this so that you can put your axle into the mount and release it that whole axle setup is pretty cool but what i don't like is this part here so I removed this as you can see here the one of the outer bearings is actually in this plastic piece which is this so I this just sticks into the uh, hub here you got to find just the right spot for the whole thing to mesh with the spokes uh, but normally there's a bearing in here so I pulled this off took the bearing out of here put it into the hub itself I'll get rid of that plastic piece altogether and I'll just use a bolt through on either wheel. Obviously longer than this. I gotta go pick some up. But that bolt will just go through and hold the wheel in place. It's not like I'm gonna need to remove these very often. So that's my plan to this point. We'll see if that changes as I go. But I'm gonna move a couple of tabs off of this and look it over and kind of see what I got here. Next thing is to try to straighten this piece out. This is what's going to attach to the bike and then uh, pull the trailer. I don't know if you can see, but it's bent in just about every possible way here. I'm gonna heat all this up and see if I can get it straight again and get the curve right. Okay, so when designing this, I've got to allow for an up and down movement independent of the bike, as well as side to side, and as well as tipping. So to handle the tipping here, normally this thing, you know, just had one wheel here in the rear. And so it would just lean in the way that you would lean your bike. It would just follow the same lean. Well, with two wheels in the back, it would resist that. And I don't want to put that kind of stress on my seat post, which is going to be pulling this. I don't want any stress there. I just want it, the seat post to do nothing more than pull. I need to have a pivot point, and I've decided I'm going to put it right here. I'm going to use one of these uh, bearing blocks here, and I'm going to mount this in. And this will actually be two-piece, so I'm going to cut this apart. And this will, this whole thing will rotate independently of the puller here so that'll keep it evenly on the two wheels even when i lean the bike or when i'm going over uneven ground side to side the trailer itself will just twist and follow okay so i had some time to work on the uh, trailer here yesterday um i went ahead and welded on a flange here that will hold my uh, block that's going to do my rotating nothing's tight yet i'm just mocking all this up um so that's going to be the uh, side to side rotation for the trailer um this will be a this is an old axle from something that i had left over it's the right diameter to go in here i'm going to have a short piece of that i'm going to probably extend it actually into here a little and into the other piece this will weld together and this will be our rotation point here so that's coming together i started to 
heat up the the what, what they call the push bar on this I, th I think of it more as a pull bar but okay and it looks like that's going to straighten out okay with the right amount of heat and uh, working that a little bit i should be able to get that bend in that right uh, made some progress here at the rear end of this as well um, i went ahead and welded on the two brackets here um, to the sides of the bike frame and i if you look at this from the end oh i've got the cover on there i put a cover on this end my thinking is that i'm going to have a water bottle holder down here put some sort of little sling in here just another place to carry water it's got this threaded mount up here that i'll be able to just hook one of these lights to that's the angles that I'm looking for on the wheels. Uh, this will pull nicely from the front here. Quite a bit of stability there with that angle. So I'm going to shoot this with some green. I had some of this green left over from another project. It's a urethane uh, automotive paint. So it should hold up real well. I like this color because it's super bright and uh, it draws some attention. So the frame is painted and I've got things all back together. Uh, I used grade 8 hardware everywhere. Got in my bottle. This is going to carry water here. I've got my rear pack that fits into that frame nicely. Actually has the right curve to it and everything. That's where I'm going to carry tools and uh, spare parts. And yeah, things are things are looking good. It, it's coming out nice. I got this stretchy net off of a Ford Taurus trunk. And that's going to go over all my stuff when it's in this area here. Keep everything tight. I've got these little connector things underneath here that the net stretches down and, and clips on and then this is the front bag here at the front here i've got the um, bearing block all welded on and bolted on this axle will go into the piece that connects to the front here and that'll be welded in but i need the pull what they call the push bar i call it a pull bar but i need that finished up so that I can mock up the right angles on this and get my height and angles, everything right with the, with the trailer itself. So coming along, I'm going to put a plastic fender here. This is going to be a fender brace for the top. I'm just going to zip tie it to the bottom here, but this will be a curved plastic piece in here that'll keep any uh, water from being thrown up onto my stuff here by the wheels. So that's where I'm at. I'm going to cut out a, a fender for the back here. It attaches to this crossbar here on the top. And on the bottom, I just zip tied it to the center posts there. So that'll work perfectly fine. And it'll keep anything in the uh, cargo compartment here from um, shifting and touching a wheel. So this part of the cart is pretty much done now. I just need to get the uh, attachment point made for the seat post and uh, straighten out the arm that uh, this all attaches to. So right now I'm just checking to make sure all my gear fits on here and it does. That's my biggest sleeping bag, my tent, ground cloth, the cooking gear and freeze dried food will go in the front, extra water in the back, tools, and that should be in good shape. So. So far, everything's working nicely. I'm going to go ahead and when I'm actually using this, I'm going to have a nylon strap tied from from side to side over the top here. This elastic net's actually doing a pretty nice job. So I guessed right on the length on that. So that's great.
So these parts here are what I'm using to make the connection to my seat post. The little bike parts that I found at the dump and the other one that I got, neither one of them had an actual connector. Um, so just having to make something simple. Um, this is the size of the seat post that I'm using. Um, so I use that as a measurement. Um, this is just regular PVC. Um, these two pieces are the outer ends of a connector for the PVC. I just cut out the middle because I only need the ends. So these are going to go on. This piece will then slide on here. And this other will slide on here. This will all be glued together. But what it'll do is give me a connection here that can rotate slightly on the uh, seat post. Um, but it doesn't allow any twisting. But it won't allow any twisting. So uh, this rubber piece is going to go inside here just to take up the slack and also get rid of any sort of uh, rattles that this might have. Um, if it was just PVC against the seat post. Um, so that rubber, I keep lots of uh, rolls of different thicknesses of rubber around. So uh, this will work nicely. The seat post will go through there and the uh, pull arm will attach to this. So this piece is the one that I just finished welding up. It'll go in the bottom of this tube and uh, joins the uh, pull bar with the trailer. Okay, we're gonna roll up to this cattle crossing here. These are raised things the Park Service puts in. And we'll see if we can roll right over this. Should be able to. <laughs> yep. No problem. The trailer's following very nicely, staying right in my tracks and not causing any issues at all. I don't even notice it's there. The trailer is pulling along very nicely. Um, I honestly don't even notice that it's there. But what's nice about the, the way it's set up too is it can lean like on off camber like this. And I can lean the bike the opposite way, do whatever I need to do. And I don't even feel it resisting me, which is nice.
So this trailer seems perfect for back roads and trails where you're going slower. I don't think I'd take it out on the road and try to do 35, 40 miles an hour with it. It's just not made for that. And I'm not sure how it would track. But at the slower trail speeds, it seems to work perfectly. I'd say that was a pretty successful trip there. Everything worked the way I hoped it would. This rotated nicely, had quite a bit of up and down here. This works well for side to side. You'll notice I've got these cables here that come up to my quick release. But what that's supposed to do is limit the amount of side to side. I didn't want one side of the trailer hitting a big bump and trailer actually tipping onto its side. So that limits the amount of rotation here on the back. Let's see if I can show you this one-handed. So that's limited to that. And same with the other way. So plenty to follow the terrain and plenty to let me lean the bike, but it won't actually tip over. So yeah, I think it's gonna work out nicely. Maybe a few little tweaks that I'll do here, but for the most part, a very successful try. So yeah, don't be afraid to put one of these together yourself. You certainly don't need to follow everything that I did exactly. I was just winging it as I went here. But if you got one of those little pull behind kid bikes that are more like a bike frame, you can also just cut off the whole top of that bike and just have the, the main frame and build off of that. So you don't have to find this specific type of weehoo kid hauler here so don't be afraid to just get one of those little trailers and start building see what you can come up with this one uh, was fun build and i think it came out pretty well it certainly seems to be tracking nicely and i should have a weight limit of probably in the area of about 75 pounds on this i probably shouldn't put more than that but that's a lot to haul that's a lot of gear for a night or two so yeah, cool hey we'll appreciate you watching and if you subscribe to my channel you'll see lots more of the e-biking stuff here in the rocky mountains